this this just for me today, before we even get to kick off, is saying Marcus Rashford. Mm-hmm. That bearing in mind he is and has been the poster boy, the local boy, the big talking point amongst everything else, amongst leaks, amongst Jack Bannon journalists. Marcus Rashford with the new contract after all the goals last season. Everybody wants to see that team sheet tonight and to see what way Eric Ten Hag is going to go. Because we can talk about Anthony Martial to an extent. John Champion, I think, had a good line at the weekend. Anthony Martial hasn't completed 90 minutes Mm. in a United shirt in three years. Tells you all you need to know about him. But Marcus Rashford was the guy bailing them out last year, banging the goals in, carrying the can taking the team on his shoulders, gets the new contract, and quite frankly, he's been nothing short of a disgrace. I can take two goals in 18. I can take bad performances. We've all had bad performances. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, we can all play badly. But you cannot accept as a manager, as a fan, as a teammate, the lack of effort, desire, to put in and work your socks off, to try and work your way through the hard time that the team is having, that you're having, that your manager is having. The only way to get through it is to work and grind your way through it. Not stand there twiddling your thumbs on the sideline, doing nothing, feeling sorry for yourself. And it's going to be really interesting to see if he is going to be selected for this game because that's Mm -hmm. going to tell a big story. Because other, other than, other, you know, Either Ten Hag's had some super-duper discussion with this player and is convinced it's all going to spin in three or four days, or he's basically buckling and saying, Mark, I haven't got anybody else. So for me, before we even get to the game, the team selection for Man United is the most intriguing thing for me. Mark, I last week, I saw it. We actually touched on, I would say loosely, I suppose, off the record yesterday when we were talking about, because you recently wrote about how you said Marcus Rashford has become probably one of Manchester United's biggest problems right now. Words that I think two years ago, we probably didn't think we'd ever say, considering he has been the poster boy for this club that we know is his childhood club. He loves them so much. But what would what would you be doing if you're Eric Ten Hag, especially now when we are kind of looking extra closely at his man management and how close are we seeing maybe a squad without Marcus Rashford at Manchester United? Well, if I was Ten Hag, I'd drop him on the basis that his, his performances haven't justified him being picked. Now, if if Ten Hag doesn't drop him, it, it sends a message to the rest of the team that, well, this guy's undroppable. You know, he's Raphael Varane's been dropped, mm. probably rightly because of form. Harry Maguire's dropped last season. You know, lots of players have been dropped by Eric Ten Hag. He, you know, he dropped Cristiano Ronaldo last season. But if he doesn't drop Marcus Rashford, then that says, well, this guy's got a free pass to just play as badly as he has been doing because, you know, they have got options. I mean, last week against Galatasaray, although although they didn't win the game and they drew 3-3, they played quite well attacking-wise without Rashford. You know, so there are opportunities. I mean, Anthony's not great, but he came in and put a bit of work in. So he does have options. I just think the message it sends out if Rashford plays tonight is such a negative one. And Ten Hag will spin it by saying that, you know, He'll score goals eventually. He'll, he'll, he'll come back to form. We're helping him. But he's lost the right, really. He's got two goals in 18 games. And one was the penalty that was kind of given to him on a plate by Bruno Fernandes against Everton. So there's absolutely nothing in Marcus Rashford's game right now, his performances, his demeanour, and, and anything that he does that justifies him being picked. So Craig's right. You know, the team sheet. I remember being at the uh, Man United Real Madrid game a few years ago and everyone's jaws dropped when Wayne Rooney was dropped by Sir Alex Ferguson. But it is one of those nights, really. It's like this is a. This is a crossroads for Ten Hag. You know, he either, you know, he's bold and drops him or he caves in and picks him. And then if he picks him, though, I think that Rashford could be, he could be kind of subject to a bit of stick from the crowd tonight. So I think a lot of United fans have lost patience with him now. And I think they yes. feel that he's living out their dream by playing for Man United. And, he, and he, he's not showing any kind of sense of joy or any, you know, anything that, you know, that most Man United fans give the right arm to play for Man United. But Rashford looks like it's an ordeal. So, I think he needs to kind of raise his game for the for the fans, but he might have to do it from the bench tonight rather than from the starting side. I, I, I think, OK, that, that, does that not tell you where we are, that, that you're actually thinking Anthony, who I, yeah. I, I think is just a fancy Dan, but would be a mm. viable alternative or a better alternative to Marcus Rashford at the moment? You know, that, that that's a sad indictment of a mm. 
of, uh, let's be honest, one of England's most talented players. He's 26 years old now. He's not a young guy, but but he's a talent. But do, do you know what? I don't think the fans would be on his back as much after he actually saw him chasing and closing down mm. and tracking back. I think fans will accept mistakes to a certain extent as long as they can see what rate. But when you're not performing and you're not working, I, I mean, I, that's just not going to sit well. well it looks like it doesn't be there. It looks like he doesn't want to be there. That's the main issue. You know, yeah. they signed a big five year contract. And he looks like he doesn't want to be there. And the reality is, if he didn't want to be there, well, why did he sign the contract? Because we've not had the opportunity to ask Marcus Rashford this. But when he signed that contract in the summer, I just said to him, Well, what have you seen in Man United that you're 26 now? What have you seen in the club that makes you believe that for the next four or five years, you're going to realize your ambitions at this club? Because there's no sign of it. You know, if he's that good and people close to him suggest he really is, well, maybe he isn't. There wasn't, ma there wasn't massive interest in him in the summer. There's no, there was no, sense of Barcelona or Real Madrid or PSG come to sign him. There really wasn't. So United caved in by making the best paid player at the club on the back of, you know, three months of good form. When the reality, if you said that three months over the last three and a half, two and a half years, that was a blip. This is the reality of Marcus Rashford. Now, the blip was him scoring a lot of goals because he had the worst season he's ever had the season before last and now he's going back to it again. So United have, you know, caved in again and given somebody a new contract when they hadn't really deserved it.